Today we have on our program a guest. His name is Paul Fraser. Paul's been on our shows before, and he's an expert in uh, sort of the, the humanness, uh, planning and goal setting and things like this. Uh, he wrote a, a couple books. Uh, one he co-authored called 101 Great Ways to Improve Your Life, and um, some really good stuff in this book. Um, he also wrote a book called Stop, Drop, and Rebalance, which we spoke about uh, extensively a few years ago. And Paul manages a company called Being World. It's all about being world class, mapping strategies for success, and conquering a mindset mindset for peak performance. We have him on today's show because of the current market crisis that's going on, and I believe a lot of it's in the head, meaning people need to get things in their head correctly. There's a lot of stuff going on on the internet and the the, uh, the TV and the newspaper and you know the, the, the slogan, you know, there's blood in the street, there's all kinds of crisis going on, everyone's concerned and what we need to do is sit back and, and reflect on what is, does this really mean to us as individuals and um, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk with, with Paul about that today and then get an idea and hopefully this will, will help you through some of the struggles that perhaps you're having and if there's things here that, that, that you need special help with you know you're always free to, uh, to contact us and then we can talk about it uh, personally. Anyway, Paul thank you for being on the show thank today. You. Thank yeah. you, thanks for having me. So we got a market crisis going on, uh, what are some of the first things that come to your mind? Well, I think uh, there's there's lots of things. Um, the way that I tackle anything is is with my model. Um, so I, I like to split things into three areas, the mindset being one of them, but uh, strategy and then action or, or tactics uh, in terms of how to, to manage the situation. Obviously, there's a lot of fear, I think, out there. Fear is one of the main things, at least um, from from the standpoint of responding to, to, the, to the market crisis. And so how do you deal with your fear? Um, I think one of the greatest things you can do, apart from having obviously a great financial advisor, one of the greatest things you can do is gain knowledge, have an understanding. Most of the time people are fearful because they don't, they, they, they don't know, they're unaware of, of something or, or they believe that they don't know something else, maybe somebody knows something that I don't know. Um, it's also one of the reasons, frankly, why we, why we got in this mess. Um, if you consider the issue of, of greed. Um, People saw, um, people and businesses and corporations saw other corporations doing things and we ended up going down the, a path of, of, of additional leverage in the market and, and so it just, it drove us to a point where, where that leverage got to a point where, mm -hmm. where it broke us. And uh, yeah, so there's, there's, there's a lot out there, there's a, a ton of things that we can be doing right now to, to mm -hmm. uh, stabilize ourselves. Um, but one of the first things I would do is, is take inventory and understand how much fear do you have? Are you fe completely fearful? Um, one of the things I, I, I sent you a, a link uh, on a Warren Buffett interview recently on, on Charlie Rose and he talked about, and I, I, uh, I, th I think he's got some really sage advice, he talked about the fact that um, he's fearful when others are greedy and he's greedy when others are fearful because he knows that right now is an excellent time, an excellent time to be investing and an excellent time to be uh, to, to be doing the contrarian things, whereas um, many other people are, are fearful because it, because of the, the hysteria around the market and, and what's going on. Um, and one of the reasons why he can be comfortable with that, apart from the fact that obviously he's he's doing okay <laughs> in terms of wealth, but the another reason is because he has a uh, much better knowledge of the market. He has a much better understanding of the reality of the situation and that this is a very serious situation, but at the same point one where um, you know there will be an end in sight and uh, you know whether it's short term or near uh, near term or long term. There, there still will be an end. So uh, yeah, so I think probably one of the first things would be trying to, trying to manage uh, your fear, get an understanding of, of whether or not you're fearful, what are the things that you're fearful about, um, and then gaining knowledge in terms of trying to, to uh, get a better understanding of those things that, that you've listed as, as being your fears. So that would be one of the first things I would try. Well, that's good. We have on our website a, a chart it's called uh, market emotions, it's sort of up and down and yep. fear is, is one of these things as we're getting close to the bottom and then there's depression and mm -hmm. despondency and then people capitulate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and once they've reached that point then there's hope starts coming back and um, 
I've had to share that chart um, a few times in my investment career, and, and this is one of them. Yep. Last one, 9-11, yep. and uh, prior to that, you know, we've had the Asian crisis, the Russian crisis. We've had lots of crises through the years. 9-11, uh, yeah. you know, comes to mind, crash of 87. There's, so there's all kinds of examples of uh, bad times. Mm -hmm. and now, historically, going forward, there's been major recovers, co recoveries through all those things. So I think people at this time they need to understand it and take some some peace in mind that this is a temporary situation yeah it I think I think <clears throat> people can uh, once again pointing to the fact that it is a serious situation it is uh, you know more significant than than some of the the, the smaller blips but it's still a uh, it's still a valley and and there will be other peaks I mean one of the things that uh, if you look at a from a personal professional standpoint if our lives were completely flat that we would have no relative change and it w w frankly it would be quite dull um, with the valleys comes the ability to have peaks the ability to be able to to have those successes and have have the uh, the high times I think the low times the times when there's there's um, when when we're going through a tough situation th there are many things you can do you can um, certainly you should you should be approaching them for what they are for, for the serious times that they are for the times where uh, where you can actually take some learning from them but I think out of that learning comes the ability to to take an opportunity from the challenge um, for example in this market time this is the time I've heard it said and I, I believe that this is the time when millionaires and billionaires are, are born because people happen to have the right uh, you know they happen to have cash and and they've been managing their their investment strategy properly, so that they are able to uh, to invest in in a, you know a devalued market. So it's and it's the same thing in your personal and professional life. So you're able to when you've got those dips, uh, you've got those those uh, those challenges. You're able to do something with it and uh, and really you know, make something out of it. Um, an example I give. Uh, which which uh, it somewhat applies perhaps is uh, the example of Coca-Cola when they brought out the new Coke. I don't know if yeah. you remember the new Coke. Um, that was a, a I haven't had that yet. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> that was that was a dramatic failure. And the point uh, the point is they didn't um, they failed. They failed very badly in terms of introducing this this new Coke that was supposed to compete with Pepsi being a bit sweeter. Yeah. Um, Warren, Warren Buffett likes cherry coke. He, he Warren, Warren Buffett he, actually he, likes likes he actually likes Pepsi better. Does he? But he likes Coke the company because he owns it. <laughs> he, he owns Coke. <laughs> the, absolutely owns a huge portion of Coke the company. Yeah. But one of the things that we can take out of that story, the the, the new Coke story, is that Coca Cola saw it was a, a a downtime in their situation, but they didn't they didn't panic. What they said was, okay, we made a mistake. We need to change. We need to. We're not going to sit around. We're not going to do focus groups for, uh, you know, a dozen months. We're gonna. We're gonna do a mea culpa. We're gonna reintroduce um, the classic Coke, and away you go. So they were able to take it. Uh, what was obviously a huge challenge uh, for them, and turn it into a huge opportunity because they ended up getting a, a much larger market share after that, of the of the uh, soft drink market. So. You know, not all things and not all challenges in life are are a uh, you know something that you're going to be able to, to come through and, and uh, see as cheery and rosy yeah. and everything else. But but there's still an opportunity to try and I think in almost all things to to, to dig and look for that silver lining or look yeah. for the opportunity that exists. Now I had a situation. I I have a few clients that are really concerned about about the markets and uh, and what I find is sometimes in that in the family dynamics. The, you have a wife and, and a husband, and maybe either one of them starts getting really anxious, and then, yeah. then the other partner sort of has a more, a better what I was better grounding in what's right. going through, yeah. and the other one's getting a, is, is tuned into CNN and just feeding off of that yeah. that negativity. The other one is watching it too, but they've they're listening to what I'm saying, and so I had a situation where. Um, this was happening, mm -hmm. 